BF, 36M, is okay spending all of his money on rent we can't afford. I, 27F, need help figuring out how to talk to my BF. He makes around $55,000 in a very high cost of living city in a very expensive state. Median income is $81,000 in our state. He doesn't work particularly hard and isn't too ambitious, but loves spending money and loves luxury living. We moved out during the pandemic to a luxury apt because he was fighting with our roommate and insisting that every sensible apt I recommended was not up to par, even though we literally couldn't afford anything else. We moved into this amazing luxury complex with dozens of amenities on a rent special which reduced the rent from $2,595 to $2,235 for a teeny tiny studio, 430 square featuring my mom signed as a cosigner. We are now coming up to the end of our lease. A renewal would likely be at market rent plus some increased $2,600 and my boyfriend is insisting that we can't move. He loves our apartment. If we don't sign the renewal we have to pay a $300 month-to-month premium, effectively driving our rent to $2.9,000. On top of the obvious problem, of leaving $30,000 plus on the table needlessly on overpriced rent, he doesn't have any savings. I'm still in school but have managed to save around $15,000 while paying half of all expenses, by working and taking on internships. Meanwhile, he has now drained his savings to cover rent because 1. His salary isn't very high too. His spending habits are atrocious 3. Our rent is astronomical. But he loves our apartment and, think how much money we're saving on the free gym and coffee. He doesn't have any savings. Nothing saved up for grad school, our wedding, or a house. Things that he claims he very much wants, but sees no problem with having to drain his savings to spend an unreasonable amount of money on rent. I fear he would spend any amount of money to keep up with the Joneses. He also often sends money to his unemployed sister overseas. His spending habits are delusional at this point and I'm tired of trying to be the voice of reason. In September of this year, the moratorium on student loan repayment will be lifted, and he will have to somehow come up with an extra $500 per month. He can barely afford rent as us, and now his equally crazy father is telling him that moving out of our place is preposterous and, what will your neighbors' co-workers think? and has now made the situation worse by offering to offset the difference between our reduced rent and our new market rent. I don't think he understands my boyfriend cannot afford his 50% of our reduced rent and definitely won't be able to cover his student loan payments, but these two idiots are feeding his delusions regarding his financial situation, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. I graduate, BSc in finance, at the end of the year and need to focus on my internship, side research project, a CFA competition team I was recruited into, networking, and full-time recruiting, rather than babysitting this adult man. I'm behind my peers as an older student, but I'm crushing it on my own time. I've been talking to realtors and looking at apps within this city he so loves, because he won't consider living outside of this area at all, and have found far more reasonable, not luxury, but quite nice, affordable spaces, $1.7,000 for 800 square featuring 1-2 bridge and I almost had my boyfriend convinced until he spoke to his father. His father thinks most people don't have any savings, this is true, and on that basis thinks it's okay to live beyond your means. I'm up against the both of them now, and I didn't need this. I need to focus on finding a good job after graduation and everything else. Our lease expires mid-semester and moving out on my own with my dog would be really difficult and a needless strain on my last semester. I don't know what to do or how to have this conversation with him for the millionth time. I've even showed him spreadsheets modeling his salary, discretionary spending, and debt repayments, and the monthly deficit on these spreadsheets doesn't phase him. It's like he doesn't understand. His dad is a doctor and has sent him money when he's come up short in the past, nothing in the last few years, though. My BF's financial situation. Weekly automated investments now at $3,000 that I had to set up for him. 401k with $4,000 that I had to set up for him. No savings because he drained his account, $4,000, to cover rent multiple times. Monthly expenses often exceed monthly salary, and will indefinitely after September. Has overdrawn his checking ACCT multiple times this year. I don't want to give him an ultimatum, but I don't know what needs to happen for him to grow up. Does he need to become homeless? Does the Department of Education need to garnish his wages? What would you do in my situation? Should I talk privately with his dad and send him a spreadsheet of my BF salary and expenses? 
He listens to his dad and his dad may be misled about my BS financial situation. I don't want to lock myself into another absurd lease with my mom on the hook as a cosigner and my credit on the line if my boyfriend can't pay or his dad backs out. And I want to save money. I want to buy an investment property, possibly start a business, save up for an MBA. I can't do that if all of my disposable income is thrown to the garbage like that. I'd gaff about the free gym or opinions of rich neighbors, and I don't want to live in poverty the rest of my life. Go solo. He's never gonna change. You'd be a fool to continue living in this flat above your means. I don't want to give him an ultimatum, but I don't know what needs to happen for him to grow up. You can't make him grow up. All you can do is protect yourself. I'd simply sit him down and tell him clearly, I can't stay here since I can't afford it. I need to downsize, you're welcome to join me. Should I talk privately with his dad and send him a spreadsheet of my BF salary and expenses? He listens to his dad and his dad may be misled about my BF's financial situation. Op, you're both adults. If you're concerned, talk to your partner directly. If he doesn't listen, and isn't interesting in seeing a financial advisor, there's nothing you can do. You're about to go broke trying to please this man. Financial issues are one of the leading causes of breakups and divorces and you're now finding out why. Personally I would seriously considering ending this while you are still unmarried, it'll be much harder to end it if you are married. I'm moving out. You're welcome to come with me. Your boyfriend doesn't seem to grasp the problem at hand and if you've already had that conversation multiple times, he's not going to. Financial compatibility, not income, but spending, saving, investment habits, etc., is a make or break issue for relationships. Move out on your own. It will be a strain for you, but so would be staying in a place you can't afford with someone who doesn't understand why that's a bad thing. Maybe you not being around will be the kick in the pants he needs to get his act together. You are 100% right. I probably couldn't date someone like this because as soon as we were married, he would drain the joint account as well. You're not dating a man you're dating a teenager. At 36 he should be able to rationalize and budget far better than he is. Don't cling to a mistake just because you spend a lot of time making it. Should I get a divorce? My husband, 35, and I, 29, have been married for 8 years. We have one kid together and each of us had a kid from previous relationships. At the beginning of our marriage, he deployed overseas and I was 5 months pregnant. When he came back I found out he had been cheating by sexting with multiple women, from our hometown, and received nudes and stuff. I saw everything and was devastated because I was Sue in love and trusted him with my life. I decided that I was too vulnerable to leave, no job, baby was 4 months old at that point, breastfeeding, just too much, so I wanted to collect myself and then leave his ass. However, I ended up falling in love with him again. We had some problems here and there. Four years ago I wanted to leave because I felt like he didn't love me, but because we are currently overseas, it wasn't as simple, so again I decided to stay. Three years ago, we were planning on having another kid, but I found out that one of his work trips was a lie, he requested leave and spent a week in Singapore doing God knows what. He wouldn't show me the bank statement so I just had to take his word for it that all he did was walk around and watch TV in his hotel room. I decided we would not have another kid because I felt I couldn't trust him. Some things that bother me now are the following. He pays all the bills in the house, I clean, do laundry, etc. He doesn't do any house chores and I think that's fair. However, I think is strange that he doesn't give me a card, he doesn't include me in the finances, when I need groceries, gas money or pay for our daughter's classes I have to ask him for money and it makes me feel awkward and weird. His life insurance is split 90% to his mom, 10% to me, because he's afraid I will remarry, he says he will adjust it if I give him another child. He's not affectionate at all, even though I am and have asked him for years to hug me, hold my hand etc. He doesn't kiss me even when we have sex. I don't like that but at the same time I'm tired of asking him, it's quite humiliating. He still has two tattoos with the name of his ex-wife. He has said for years he would remove them, but there's always an excuse. He doesn't take care of his health, he smokes a whole pack of cigarettes daily, doesn't take his blood pressure medication, eats junk and doesn't exercise. The good qualities he has. Father of our kid and a great amazing stepdad to my kid. He's allowed me to go back to school full time, I don't have to worry about bills etc he's laid back doesn't mind when I have a busy day and I can't cook or do the dishes he's funny, hardworking and very smart. I don't know. I have been thinking about this for at least 6 months. I would like to hear someone else's thoughts.
Thank you. Girl leave him. I hope you're in a better position today to do it. A guy just doesn't go to Singapore alone to watch TV in their ROOM colon slash slash. You deserve better. What are you waiting for? Leave already. Make sure you'll find out some financial stuff and other stuff and make copies. Take them with you. Speak to a lawyer. He literally abandoned you a long time ago. Cannot be trusted and for some laughs here and there it's all not worth it. So your husband is a serial cheater who doesn't trust you. His life insurance goes to his mom, not the caretaker of his own kid. He doesn't take care of his health, and he smokes. He has multiple tattoos of not you. The sex is not great, and he doesn't like you enough to even kiss you when having sex. Is he like super rich? Do you have a private airplane? Because I seriously fail to see the appeal. You're not yet 30 years old. Practically speaking you have some 10, 15 years left to get your ducks in a row. Starting over as a woman over 40 is way more difficult. When you look around, is this the life you want? Because the description kind of sucked. So he's expecting you to do everything around the house but won't take care of you or the kids financially when he possibly likely dies early because he can't stop smoking and eating junk food. And despite you taking care of the house and his children you are also left in the dark financially? Sounds like he has absolutely no respect for you. You can do much better. I'm in the same boat if you like to know my opinion. I said no for a reason. However, I ended up falling in love with him again. Whoa, you just loaded a whole truck of horseshit in front of me. Like you wanted to divorce three times, you listed a whole fucking book of deal breakers. Yet in the last three sentence you list three positive things about him. Like you do all the chores and he is the laid back funny father for the kids? Sorry but that's a very low bar. Think about your children op, because if you want to love a miserable life that's one thing. But don't set bad examples for them. They can sense that daddy want kiss mommy, etc. He is fucking around every girl from your hometown to Singapore and you know it. If you're really unsure get an STD test and wait for the results. Seriously though, he's controlling you through money, that's financial abuse. And he'll only do certain things if you have another baby. Also, he doesn't care at all about what you want and need in the relationship. There are so many red flags here. The age gap, the cheating, sexting, the trip to Singapore, not including you in finances and giving you only 10% of insurance because he will be jealous of you remarrying after his death, etc. Do not try to have another kid with him, and leave him when you're financially able to. There are plenty of men that have all this guy's good qualities but won't cheat on you and will prioritize you in the insurance plan. My, 28F, boyfriend, 26M, replanned our cancelled trip from last year, as a solo trip by himself. Last year, my boyfriend and I were supposed to go to on a trip together. However, a week before the trip, he cancelled due to family issues. Luckily I was able to get a credit, but he barely considered me when he decided to cancel. Now with things opening up, he's decided to plan a solo trip. I get it he enjoys traveling alone. I think it's important in relationships, allowing both partners to have space to travel and grow. However, he's planning on going to the same place we were supposed to go. I feel hurt by this. Our relationship has been on the rocks lately a new issue again and again. We're trying to make it work and even made a plan to be more proactive in meeting the other's needs. So far I can tell he's been trying and I love that. But him springing this news on me makes feel so hurt. Am I justified in feeling hurt by his decision? How would you handle? Edit. I want to clarify that the replanned trip is not identical. For our original trip, we were going to Vancouver. For his solo trip, he's going to Vancouver Island, not sure if this mitigates concern. I still feel hurt. Update. I've decided to end things with him. I understand that Vancouver, Vancouver Island are two different places, but it still doesn't feel right. A primary reason why he initially cancelled was because he didn't want to fly to the East Coast during COVID. So for me, the fact that he picked anywhere in Vancouver is kind of stings. His response was apathetic at best. After saying I wanted to end things because of his decision, and that I was extremely hurt by his inconsideration, this was the gist of his response. I'm not looking to argue here, and I don't feel I need to explain my desire to do a trip on my own. I mentioned it's not him traveling alone, but him choosing Vancouver. He doesn't have any sense of remorse or contrition. So I'm going to walk away and let go of trying. Have you tried replanning your relationship as a solo trip? This is a joke. If you can't say, this thing that you are doing hurts my feelings, how hard are the two of you actually working to fix your problems? 
How interested is he in actually working to fix them if he wouldn't want you to say that you're upset about this? Honestly, from the little bit here, I would guess you're into the stage where you should accept you're not compatible and move on instead of clinging and convincing yourself it's worth staying unhappy because maybe things might suddenly get better. But I'm pretty cynical in general about the chances that a relationship will go from, on the rocks, to, good and solid and healthy. Honestly that's super fucked up. He should have planned the trip together since it's the same one. Are you sure he still wants to be with you? I heard a psychologist speak recently and he said that many men don't leave relationships that they've emotionally checked out of until they find a replacement for the woman. I don't know what he was basing that on, but it rang true to my own experience. Your boyfriend's action indicates that you weren't a concern for him. He just didn't care. It wasn't the actions of a man in love. Am I justified in feeling hurt by his decision? How would you handle? Yes. You are justified in feeling hurt. It's messed up that you are even questioning it. You've said yourself you've been fighting for the bare minimum. Stop doing that. Just tell him, making the plan to go to Vancouver Island on your own after canceling our couple trip to Vancouver sends me a clear message that you are not invested in this relationship. I think we should acknowledge that our relationship isn't going to work out and go our separate ways. If this was the one thing but according to you it's a new issue again and again. Stop torturing yourself, he's not the last man on the planet. Love yourself and respect yourself enough to say I need a guy who doesn't find taking me into consideration so hard. Yes, you're certainly justified in feeling hurt. It was a planned trip together and for him to reschedule without you is a message. What message I do not know, but you should tell him how it's making you feel and find out. Surely your ex-boyfriend now, right? What did he say when you told him you were upset? What is okay for your partner to do on while on vacation without you? I, 22M. I'm having issues with my girlfriend, 21F, of one year because of what happens when she goes on trips with her best friend without me, which is often. While on these trips she insists it is necessary and completely alright to go out to small dates like lunch and dinner with guys she has met on her trip, as well as give out her contact info freely, keep talking to them after the trip, hang out at guys' houses after the clubs, and just not communicate while she is on vacation because she says she is busy. Personally I feel as though it's not a big deal to expect your partner to not do these things, however she views it as controlling and overbearing. I have tried to explain that they are just boundaries I have, and that I trust her not to cheat with them. I just don't think it's okay to do those things when you are in a relationship. It has caused a lot of strain arguing over it every time she goes on these trips. She has her best friend with her, I don't understand why she can't just hang out with the friend she went with instead. Side note. The friend has cheated on her boyfriends every trip they have went on and she has told me this, and has cheated on the last four of them. It might be because the friend is too busy cheating. Thanks in advance for any advice or insight you guys can give. Edit. For clarification purposes since a lot of you are asking about it, the words, small date, are the words she uses to describe the thing she does, and it is going out to eat with a guy for what she says is just for a free meal at a nice restaurant. Based on the responses to the other issues as well as that one though, now that it's clear I'm not mistakenly being controlling by asking her to do these things, and at some level have been gaslighted into even having to ask, this relationship is over and should have been a long time ago. Thank you all for the comments and help. Small dates with guys she meets on trips. That qualifies as cheating, no? Seems like she's trickled truthing you to see your reaction to these things. Hanging out at a stranger's house is definitely sketchy as hell. It's completely okay to be uncomfortable with what she's doing. I definitely wouldn't be okay if my significant other went on dates. She's living the single life while having the security of being in a relationship with you. If you're not comfortable, leave. Red flags all over this girl. You can do better. The real problem here is that she is continuously breaking a very reasonable boundary and then gaslighting you into saying you are controlling. Have some self-respect and don't be naive to what is happening in front of your eyes. You don't want to leave because you've been involved w her for a year but she def going on these trips w her ho ass friend to cheat on you dude. She literally told you she goes on dates and back to their houses. Do better king. Going on dates with guys and going to their houses on vacation? That's absolutely not normal in a relationship and she's trying to manipulate you into thinking so. If she can't respect your very normal and reasonable boundaries then let her go. You deserve better. NGL, if her friend is cheating I feel like there's a pretty good chance she's cheating too. You should really dodge that bullet and get out of there, that sounds like a really bad situation to be in. 
I would tell her she needs to stop doing that because it's making you uncomfortable or you're going to leave her. And make a decision based on her reaction. Side note. The friend has cheated on her boyfriends every trip they have went on and she has told me this, and has cheated on the last four of them, side note. Your girlfriend has cheated as well. You joking right? Bro she for the streets. Oh boy, she's sleeping, cheating on you with all these guys she mentions, she just wants you to agree with it. 